Hello, 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 everybody, and welcome to another Lost Caverns of Ixalan draft here on the channel. I will be your tour guide, guiding you through the caverns themselves, showing you around, telling you which picks I'm making, which plays I'm making, and talking through everything so you can improve and have more fun playing yourself. If you enjoy this sort of thing, let me know in the comments. I'll make more of them. Okie doke. Crowd favorite, Tarion Soul Cleaver, also a card that I find to be relatively useless, um, is in the pack, so this card's... One that, the reason I don't like it is because essentially you put it on your creature and then your opponent just can like, sometimes like play around it or like kill the creature after it gets like one counter or other, it just doesn't buff the creature on its own, which is what I don't like. There isn't a braid in this pack, which is going to be my pick, I think. There's also a Kawati Scavenger, which I like. These, this card gets back a card from your graveyard if you have to send. This card is just like a great removal spell. I think I've started to figure out the descend decks a little bit more, which makes me kind of like the Kawati Scavenger. It explores cash, which is sometimes good in, like, a green-white deck, but it's pretty narrow. I think it's pretty much exclusively between the Scavenger and the Abraid here. Hmm, Abraid just kills a bunch of stuff in this set. But I really think Scavenger is decent, too. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I'm going to take the Abraid. They're both kind of... Abraid is good in any red deck, and Kawati Scavenger is only good in, like, a, a more of a subset of green decks. Immediate Punish. I love Tendril of the Myco Tyrant. I don't know how good it is, but I love this card. Just two drop that huge applications in the late game. I think it's the best card in the pack by like a wide margin. Hwatli's Final Strike is also okay. Um, but yeah, Tendril of the Myco Tyrant, pretty reasonable. Hwatli's Final Strike, another good green card. Good removal spell. Inti's name will grace our poems and histories for generations. Yours will collect dust forgotten in this cave. Savage. Iceberg is not a card that I like. But yeah, we'll take the Tendril. Ooh. A little bit of staunch crewmate action. This card's quite good. Nizil, Nikanzil. I don't think Nikanzil's... Like, I don't really love blue-green. There's a Tinker's Toe. Staunch Crewmate's really good. There's also Hwatley's Final Strike to go with the Tendril. I'm going to take Staunch Crewmate. I haven't gotten to try this card yet. And I could go blue-red still. We see, like, six blue cards in this pack. Seven blue cards. Eight blue cards in the pack, so blue could be open. <laughs> I don't think anyone's taking a blue card here. I kind of want to try the blue-red deck, so we'll see. Nice. Blue is always open, that is true. There's a Kutzil, Malamed Explorer. There's a Lodestone Needle. There's a Sunfire Torch as well. And there's a Deadweight. Deadweight's probably the best card in the pack. I mean, Kutzil's quite good in those decks. Uh, Kutzil. There's also a couple of Explorer's Caches that might wheel. If I take the Kutzil here. Hmm. I'm tempted between Kutzil, Deadweight, Torch if I wanted to stick with Red, but I don't think that's the pick. So I'm going to eliminate Torch. And then Lodestone Needle to go with the Crewmate. I think I'm going to take Kutzil. I think I, can, I think I might wheel some of the green-white cards. Nice. And then we get a Clay-Fired Bricks. Rewarded. Feeling good. Vanguard of the Rose is okay. Gen Growing Rights not doing that much, but love me a clay fired bricks. Actually makes Kutzil like trigger on all your creatures. Because they all have power greater than their base power. It's not the most aggro card, but I do think it's good. And you don't have to be the most aggro deck. You can be more mid rangey. Ooh, Petrify. Let's go. So white is now looking open. We'll have to see if we wheel any of the explorer's caches. Those who break the laws of the Malamet become cold, silent warnings to others who might try. Terrifying. Huh. This pack is kind of empty for me. There's shadows, which always seems to do well against me, and then I never play it. There's a dino card. I might just take the crack shot. 
because I'm pretty sure I'm playing white at this point. I don't really want to play out of air. I'm not going into black this draft. Mm -hmm. I don't even really regret the abraid pick. The three mana three two descend card isn't even the best in green white usually. Hmm. I guess Kutzil also plays well with the uh, Watley's Final Strike card. Hmm. Deadweight. Might of the Ancestors. I've never seen this card really do much. Actually, somebody beat me with it, but it was only because I was, like, getting wrecked anyway. And then they played this card. I was like, no! There's a Scribe, and there's a Deadweight. I just think I'm going to avoid black this draft. I've been playing a lot of black decks. And uh, we'll try something else this time. I think switching into black for deadweight pick 8 is a little bit maybe ambitious. And I'll just boost up the quality of my 2 drops. Because Attentive Sunscribe is certainly better than Thousand Moons Crackshot, I think. Also potentially just sending more solid signals to the people nearby. Not that that's a huge consideration. Because if I'm just like taking random like black cards and white cards, it does make it harder for the people to figure out what's open. Like they already could be in green. I've passed a few good green cards. Yes, I knew this would work. The plan worked! I'm hoping I get the second one back. I really wanted to try this card. This is one of the whole reasons I did this. Because I, I wanted to see if I could get some Explorer's Cash action. Yes! I knew I could do this! I I feel like a genius. There's an Old Tech Archaeologist. Perfect. This deck is going great. Known for my skills on the wheel. Nobody wants the Explorer's Cash except me. Gem Guard. I'll try the Gem Guard over another crack shot. Gem Guard is nice because it can buff itself and put counters on itself for the cash. Like, I can tap the cash to put counters on the Gem Guard without having to use the cash. Man, this draft is going well, I would say. I've got the Kutzil. I got both caches back. Cash back! Hmm. <laughs> We're talking about cash back. We're talking about cash backing. Just taking the uncommon to build vault progress. Woo! We got it. Malamet Brawler, baby. I've already got four two drops. What is Magic Pictionary, Schmeeks? I, I draw a Magic the Gathering card and people guess what it is. It's pretty straightforward. Woo! I'm the best. <laughs> this card is fantastic. <laughs> I love this card. Love me a good old Thousand Moon Smithy. Oh, what a pickup. Um, the other card I would take after this is Thrashing Grothodon. It was the plus one plus one counter cave. I'm not going to be playing that cave. Also, for folks watching on YouTube, I am streaming this live, so that's why I'm answering questions and stuff. But yeah, I don't like playing that card in a two-color deck. This is an easy thousand move smithy. This card's absurd. And then I would take Thrashing Grothodon, and then I would take uh, Oltec. Tinker's Tote goes great with Thousand Moon Smithy. Goes well with Gem Guard. Goes well with Clay Fired Bricks. Also, Cosmium Confluence, which only cares if I have a lot of caves. I think this is a pretty easy Tinker's Tote. This card's pretty reasonable. Not my colors, but in general. This card always owns me. I kind of want to just take it. Hmm. 
Hmm. My deck is more mid rangey. Yeah, I think this is the pick. Love me a Malamut. The mightiest Malamut warriors train as titan killers, elite champions capable of facing down the caverns as most fearsome beasts. Nice. Don't like the Oteklin. So far, so good. 14 picks in. Or 18, but... Zoyowa's Justice. Oh my gosh. Zoyowa's forcing this guy to walk the plank. There's so many goblins around this guy. Theona. There's no flavor text on this card because there's so much text. The picture's worth a thousand words, as they say. Ooh, nice little petrify action. This draft, I feel like uh, the other drafters are, are a little bit slower, but it's okay. Ooh, there's another Bolas avatar. Nice. If you recognize yourself in the draft. I mean, draft packs are... Yeah, but if you recognize yourself in the draft, welcome. Runaway Boulder. So I've got these two removal spells. I've got the two caches. And everything else is a creature, pretty much. I guess play five bricks is kind of a... Kind of just a normal card. This card mostly just because of synergy with Thousand Moons. Like that's one of the best ways to flip Thousand Moons. Let's go Tinker's Toad into Thousand Moons. Archaeologist is also great with Toad. Also, just buffing up your tokens with counters just seems reasonable to me. I've never really gone for this like green white synergy based uh, counters deck, so I'm pretty excited about this one. We'll see what we shall see. Ooh, nice a Malamet Scythe. Perfect combat trick for me. I'm pretty happy with this pickup. This card's fantastic. This card would be pretty solid, I think. But I really have two choices. Malamut Scythe and Archaeologist number two. And I already have two five drops, so pretty easy Scythe. Hmm. Cavern Stomper, maybe? I mean, one six drop is not that far amiss. I don't want blast. I don't really want leap. Because I already have this as combat tricks. Yeah, I'll just take a big creature. Nine creatures, eight non creatures, but Tinker's Toad is also a creature, essentially. And this is also a creature, essentially. So I basically have 11 creatures and six non creatures. Yeah, I hope this deck works too. Normally I spend more time talking about packs when I'm not gonna when I'm just gonna be waiting on one. But, you know, I feel like these picks have been pretty straightforward for the most part. Once you kind of settle into a color pair, it makes it a lot more easy to just be like, okay, let's just see what comes. Come what may, we shall draft. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'll just take a three mana three three, I guess. That will sometimes gain me life. And hopefully I don't play it. I don't really need family reunion. This card is so weird to me. Some Echoes remember every moment of their past lives and spend their existence contemplating past choices. Oh my gosh. It's a little spirit guy that's reflecting. He's sitting on his little throne. He's like, what did I do wrong? My gosh. Crazy. What cards am I hoping to hit in the next pack? I would love Sovereign Okanekahau. The Mythic Rare. That card is absurd. Uh, I, at a more realistic level, I would love the Glyph Weaver, the uncommon 5-drop. Uh, like, they give them all my whole team, plus 2, plus 1. That card's fantastic. Um, I would like uh, more um, good 2-drops, so I can, like, replace the Thousand Moon Crack Shot. Nice, I get the land. I think that's going to be better than Sandwing. But maybe it's not. I think I'm gonna be a 17 land deck, and I'm not gonna be like the shave lands to play sand wings as replacements strategy. So just getting a cave is nice. I have like good uses for my mana. I've got this guy, I've got a six drop. P 
People always play a Tali's favor against me. The trample is actually really scary on this card. <sighs> this is a slow draft, but it's okay. Not every draft has to be high octane. We're saving the high octane for the games. Gonna take bad colony so I don't pass any white cards. Another three mana three three. Honestly, thousand moon infantry seems okay with my caches because it untaps itself, so it's like a vigilance creature. Also goes well with thousand moon smithy. I'm glad I have this Malamet Brawler now because I'm a little bit light on two drops. The blowgun. Logons. Wow, last pick acrobatic leap is not not bad. Not bad at all. Nice, nice. The Jade Seed Stone seems good. Oh my gosh. There's also a great two drop. Hmm. This is interesting. There's a 2-drop that's a 3-1. That can be indestructible. And there's a card that lets me put 3 counters on things. I think this card's really good with my caches. I'm going to try the Seed Stones. I feel like I'm going for a Synergy deck. I can just play like really any 2-drop. And now I get this guy. Which is actually good along with things like Explorer's Cache and my cheap creatures that I'm going to be playing. I would love, I would actually play like random one drops in this deck just because like putting counters on things is good. So, like, there are some like random one drops that I normally wouldn't even consider that I think I would play here. Nice, get a little two drop action. This card wouldn't be bad though either. Maybe, but this card's great in my deck, I think. So I can play pay five mana, get my cave, and then put six counters on it. It's like a five mana six six that ramps me as well. Or five mana nine nine if I already have my cave. That could be good. Yeah, I chickened out, though. I just wanted another 2-drop, and then I just get a nice 4-drop for my deck. Now a nice 3-drop. But yeah, just even if you have 1 cave, I don't think I had a cave last time I took that card. But, like, 5 mana, get the land, and then put two, put 6 counters on it. It seems okay. 5 mana, 6-6. Six, six. It also works with my counter synergies. Easy Gronthodon. I think I'll take the Attenta Sunscribe over my second Malamut Scythe. What's my opinion on this set? It's pretty solid. Um, It takes some getting used to, I feel like. I'm not exactly sure why it takes some getting used to, but it kind of feels like it does. <laughs> Cut those junky three drops. I don't really need to glimpse the core. Three, four, five, six. I'll take another cave over the Sunscribe. Because I'm already going to be making cuts. And I think Crackshot is enough is close enough to the Sunscribe that this is like better than a basic land. This card. Great. Love this card. I've never played it, but it's really good against me. <laughs> oh, I'll just take another infantry. I'm not going to play any of these cards. I'm not going to put plus three, plus three, and trample. I'd rather just play a scythe. Ooh, 
Whoa, we wield this guy. Seeker would be a card that I actually played in this deck, because Seeker into cash or whatever is just fine. But I'm happy to get a nice two drop. A little bit of an upgrade over the crack shot. Reacher count 15, back down to 14. These picks aren't really. I'm just mostly thinking about my final deck. I think I'm going to cut the crack shot. Helping hand is maybe okay. I have a lot of creatures. But not a lot of like great three drops. How does this deck look? I mean, pretty good, I think. Pretty good. I mean, sure. I've got. Good sideboard options, too, if I want to mess with the deck. This is a good 3-drop for my deck, because it can give, it, give itself a counter. So now I have to make one more cut. Holtec Archaeologist could go. I wield Staggering Size anyway. I like this deck a lot. This deck does look sweet. So we, we're kind of building it as we went, so I think we're good on the... So we have... We're slightly biased towards green right now. I think we want to slightly bias towards white, because we have double white, double white. My double green card is more expensive. And this guy can help me scry into better lands. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be the build. I'll see you folks in the games. Before I get to the games, I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support my content at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. If you have been enjoying my videos, if they've been helping you find more success in your draft and have more fun playing Magic, and you would like to show your support, then you can do so via Patreon. It is essentially a way to tip my channel, but it also comes with some cool rewards like access to my card-by-card -card tier list for Lost Caverns of Ixalan and other cool things like that. I want to give a huge shout out to all of the patrons who support at the credits level, and if you're interested in learning more, you can of course find that at patreon.com slash Nikolai Bolas. Without further ado, though, let's get to the games. Welcome to round one. We'll keep this hand. We've got both explorers' caches. We'll see how it does. Hmm. This card goes well with like one drops. I feel like. Play a 2-2, because when I buff it to a 3-3, it won't trade with this guy anymore. Hmm. Blue white, eh? Helping Hand does have targets. Cash is so awkward to play. It's one of the reasons I haven't been doing it much. Like, if it costs one mana, it would be like, oh, this is easy to play. Petrified me. So I can get down both caches. Oh, 
pull back the defenses, and then I can play the Guardian, put two more counters on his stuff. Oh my gosh, what a rip. I hope they can't counter this. Okay. Maybe I could have put a counter on the My Myco Tyrant and then attacked them for five. And it felt kind of unsafe attacking into so much open mana, though. I have them on a three turn clock. Which I think is faster than what they're doing. I wish I'd hit them for five last turn, but then they would have hit me for four. Wow. This has not worked out at all. Explorer's Cache has looked awful this game. They just pet, pet, petrify, petrify. Maybe I did something wrong with it. I might have messed it up or something. I might as well attack with this guy if they're going to try to flip this. Oh, they had the Arouska thing, right, right, right. Could I still win this game despite the core Explorer's caches being, like, so useless to me? I mean, I feel like it's a distinct possibility. I can't craft away the Guardian. It has to do be a thing that dies. I'm mostly playing this because I got owned by it in a game. Like, it was so bad for me when my opponent had it. So next turn I can play Colossodactyl. Plus Petrify, and then the next turn I can flip. I think it's okay. I mean, this would have been good if their answers didn't happen to be, like, Bounce Spells and Petrifies. Gosh darn it, opponent. This is so rigged. My gosh, my, my poor explorer's caches. LOL.
There's so many petrifies on the battlefield. It's like a gorgon walked into the building. I played this card to like refuel my explorer's caches, and I, but I only had one creature at the time. No! What? Splendid Angel, are you kidding me? This game is getting insane. No! I'm dead. Oh my gosh, I tried so hard, but my cards suck. <laughs> ah! Cash is garbage. How come it looked so good when my opponent played it? Right, because I didn't have Petrifies that game. I actually didn't draw a single removal spell that game. That was probably a factor, but still, why? <laughs> Uh, I knew this card would wheel because it sucks. Oh my gosh, a call for call. You don't say. <sighs> Three, four... Da -da -da -da. Five, six, but they just buff their guy and then I concede. My gosh, this game would have been so winnable if they just hadn't, ugh, had so many petrifies. I played my angel, it got petrified and I cried. And I cried. My gosh, that was so sad. We're not going to change anything up after one game. I want to get a larger sample size. Now that I've actually got some winning under my belt, I can like afford psychologically to experiment with decks that are bad. At least I know nobody else is going to have any petrifies after that guy drafted all of them. There were five petrifies on the battlefield there or something. I think you need to have Explorer's Cache with one drops. Like, that's the only way that makes sense, really. Burning Sun's Cavalry, we shall meet you with our Vanguard of the Rose. This way, if they play a Dino, I can still trade. I don't think Seed Stones is particularly great either. As you saw last game, it just gets blown out. So flipping into a big creature is pretty nice. I've been chomped. But what do you have to say about a Malamed Brawler opponent? Hmm? Riddle me this. Ah. Uh, now I would like to draw Petrify. This is the sort of game where being on the draw is a massive disadvantage because now I'm just like trying to block this whole time. I have a double block lined up. You won't attack opponent. Please. Please don't attack me. <laughs> Why? Oh my gosh, just... 
This is literally a die roll game. I literally would have been fine if I'd been on the play this game, but every turn I take. Gosh. I'm just playing my cards out, hoping for a miracle. I don't know why he did that immediately instead of waiting for the double block. I am in so much trouble. Oh, we got trouble. Right here in River City. That's trouble with a capital P and that T and that rhymes with P and that stands for pool. Yes, the block was successful. Yep. I figured they had Cavern Stopper. That's why I was hoping to draw a land here so I could play this plus the Jade Seed Stones and be back in the game. Back in the game, baby. Please, please. One time. Let's go land. Do the bottom. We're in shape. No! I suck. I'm dead. I'm not even gonna... I could play this and... Oh my gosh. If I'd been able to play this plus this, then I would have been able to double block it, but yeah. Literally just play draw gap there. I just got die roll gapped. Couldn't do anything. My god, because you can't race if you're like both trading chunks of five. My gosh. Maybe I'll win a die roll once in my life. Gosh darn it. After this game, I'll tweak my deck if I win. My gosh. Get owned, Explorer's Cash. My gosh, their seed stones looked real good there. Buffing up their two drop into a five drop. Pretty, pretty good. Well, shucks. We have to mulligan even though we've got our best card. I'm so sad. We just don't have our colors. This time we have our colors. We're ready. Get rid of getting getting rid of cash. Cash is awful. I mean, I would have been happy to have it in this hand. Don't get me wrong. Oh man, but I have to get rid of something. Am I on the draw again? I, I thought I won the die roll. Opponent with the mulligan decision of the lifetime. Yes, I once did win the die roll. I'm a beast. Ah, Oteklan. If you look to your left, you'll see the classic Oteklan landmark. It's an arch that turns into a levitator sometimes. Ah, multiple landmarks. You see, the thing about landmarks that I love is that you can have multiples that are the exact same. That's how landmarks work in my culture. Vigilance plus gem guard hype. I just think I don't know how to build aggro decks in this format. Like, every time I try, it just ends terribly. I don't really want that card. Whoa, their gem guard's better than my gem guard. Come on, guy. You gotta at least use the landmarks.
This is going to be funny. We're just both going to be growing gem guards. Nice. The battle of the gem gods has begun. There can only be one. Left to their own devices, gnomes re-engineer their own devices. Missed one damage. The reason I missed one damage, I was thinking about uh, using the River Herald guy to do this because I almost petrified their guy. I changed my mind partway through. But yeah, I did miss a point of damage. Like, I almost did this on their gem guard. Their Batalame can be like a... Two, three, four, five toughness creature. Wow. Wow. That's good for me. Nice. Really? That's good for me. I think I would trade Bartolome if I were them. I need an untapped land. Give me the untapped land. We can do this. Victory shall be ours for sure. All we need. Yes, they're out of gas. We can win this game. Come on, green white rally. For justice, for freedom. Oh yeah, that's gonna be good. With my gem guard. With my noble gem guard. Together we shall fight. We shall hold them. <laughs> we shall hold them in the Presidios. At their landmarks shall they fall. Ah, draft. And they can sack it too. The value! They're overpowering me with value! No, another gem god! My gem god is mightier. 
There can only be one. Yes! Highlander Gem Guard! Okay, now that we've won a game with this configuration, now we can tweak things. Uh, I really wish I had more, like, one drops to go with these caches, because going one drop into cache actually seems maybe good. Hmm. Opponent trading that Death Thatcher was a fatal mistake. Hmm. My curve is so low. What do I do? Oh. Five mana, four, four, scry three. Yeah, this is tough. Cut a cash for a three mana three three. I just want to get more reps with cash. It's it's almost certainly worse than just any other card that I could play like a two four or a three three. But I just want to see it in play in more situations because I feel like I've seen it in its worst situation possible. But I don't know. It's 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 almost certainly incorrect. Part of it is just educational value on trying cards out. Because I don't know. There's probably some homes for it. So if we get it in a good situation, we can like showcase that. Okay. Ah, the double cash. They call me the king of cash. Ah, yes. This is horrible. I hate Visage of Dread. They get to mana screw me. What the heck? It's like taking a land. Oh my gosh, this is awful. Oh my gosh. The horror. Gosh darn it. Cash is going to be really bad again. I can already tell. Oh no. I think I can wait and grind out this game a bit. Never mind. The value is over unreal. Too good. Bartolome del Presidio. Okay. Well, Snail. Goodbye, Cash. They say you're king, but Cash is not king here. Oh my gosh. Just hateful deck. Hateful. Not only is it not a green source. Man, I think this game is enraging me because this Visage of Dread completely screwed me. And I feel like a victim. I feel victimized! Why doesn't anyone understand my pain? Oh no, Bartholome is going to get huge. And uh, that is not good for me. He can be a... He can get one, two, three, four, five, six counters. My god. Bartholome. Hmm. <sighs> Uh, 
Bartolome is absolutely terrifying here. Let's just uh, all agree on that. Oh, no! Why are you so mean, opponent? You're so mean. I might just be dead here. <laughs> Three, ten, fourteen. No, not quite. Why didn't they sacrifice? Oh, they could make it to trade. Right, right, right. Quite right, quite right. Ah! I love being able to cast my spells. It's one of my favorite parts of magic. Gosh darn it. Oh my gosh, I'm just dead, aren't I? Ptolemy is quite good. So I can go block here, block Bartolome. No! The bane of my existence! And they... No! <laughs> GG. My deck was bad. That's what you get for trying cash. Based on a hunch. It wasn't even a hunch. My opponent played a cash against me and it was really good. And then I wanted to try it. I was like, oh gosh, cash looks sweet. And then it was awful for me every time. That experiment is one that I will just chalk up to. My opponent had it in a really good spot, and I'm never playing that card again. Every other time I've had cash in my pool, I've been like, I wonder what this card does, and then it does that. Anyway, if you made it all the way to the end of this video, in the comment section down below, leave hashtag no cash, because, but spell it like SH, like no money, but no cash, because we've learned not to use cash. Or just leave hashtag stone, because we were petrified there. We got petrified a lot. I think I got petrified more this draft than I've ever been petrified in my life. But yeah, um, that's going to do it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it, learned something. Uh, sometimes learning what not to do or which cards don't work is as valuable as learning which cards do work from an education perspective. Never drawing Thousand Moon Smithy probably didn't uh, help that much as well. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll talk to you next time.